I now have the intake off and much of the parts off the engine managed to get it stripped down quite a ways. Uh, I want to show where the leak uh, was taking place so you can see there's the engine. Um, I've laid a flashlight down in the uh, valley because uh, it takes you have to get the light just right on it to be able to see it. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and if you look right there no, well, that's too close. Let me back up a little. There. That diagonal line that goes from the top left to the lower right, that is where she's leaking. And you can see um, I'll bring other light in here now. If you just glance at it, it doesn't look like much. Just a little line, but that's where where it's been leaking. You can see there, you know, there's still. I'll get a little different angle on it here. You can see that there's still a few droplets um, hanging on the on the valley wall there. Let's see if I can pick that, get that that back up. The light isn't on it just right, it's really hard to see it. Right back in there again. Get my, I'll get the second light out of the way. And then you can see it. And then down in the valley further, you can see coolant laying down in here with the lifters all the way, all the way down in, all the way to the back. So that's the problem, that's why we're going to pull it out. I've got another um, probably half a day's work or so to get it uh, ready to pull. Then I have to retrieve my uh, uh, my engine hoist and, uh, and make preparations to pull it out. But, but that crack that flaw in the block is um, is really the problem. Just as an update, uh, continuing along with uh, pulling this engine out for the second time uh, to address that coolant leak that I've um, showed you that we've got a crack down on the block down in this area. Uh, right now it's all stripped down and uh, just got the torque converter disconnected, the starter disconnected, working on all the uh, other odds and ends. Um, I've uh, picked up a potential replacement block, so uh, I'll have some help here pretty soon. We'll get the hood off the car and we'll get the engine um, out and on a stand and uh, get it uh, disassembled the rest of the way. Yeah, there's one of those lobes. That lobe is really wiped out. You can see that it's rounded as well as, as flattened. And then those and the ones up front. Yeah, not pretty at all. Those are the ones on, I think those number ones, <coughs> which had, um, and they have they've got almost an eighth of an inch play at the push rod, so you've taken a lot you know, there's been a lot of metal came off came off that camshaft. Okay. I was able to, after some searching to pick up a different replacement block on eBay. Uh the block uh is out of a nineteen eighty one Camaro with a manual transmission based on decoding the numbers. Uh it's a different part number. But I tracked down that the part number change is due to it being a Tonawanda manufactured block and engine versus a Flint engine manufactured block and engine. Otherwise, it's completely interchangeable. They just have uh, some different locators for machining, and each plant in those days would uh, manufacture things just a little bit differently because they didn't have common process. 
it's a, a, a standard block, a standard bore. It all looks like it's in good condition. Uh, the person I bought it from had bought it along with some oversized pistons and, rod, and different rods and crank uh, for a different project, and the block was surplus. So uh, looks really good for me, and uh, we'll get this one to the engine shop. Well, I got the engine out now for the second time with a little help from my son-in-law. It's now loaded on the trailer, ready to go back to the engine shop. Uh, and you can see next to it is the uh, block that I picked up that's uh, out of another Camaro, a few years older. And um, that'll be my core at this point uh, to go in and, and um, have them re redo it again. We're uh, just about set to hook it on the truck and take it down to the back to the engine shop.